All right, well, welcome everybody to the final uh, video of this series of Acacia Branch Out. Um, thought that, uh, you know, what, what not a better uh, place to end than really talking about Acacia's mission. I know that that's something that uh, I'm sure um, some of you have a, have a pretty good idea of. It's up on our website, but thought it might be fun uh, and interesting to kind of talk a little bit more about, you know, how that developed and, and what we're really looking for. Um, so, you know, to start, uh, I think I had mentioned in the previous video that uh, both myself and Keith, um, we uh, were both uh, involved in a lot of different college counseling centers throughout our training, whether it was our practicums, our internship, our postdoc, um, and we kept on, you know, noticing a lot of the same problems no matter where we went. Um, and, and these problems really created a barrier for, uh, for treatment for, you know, students who needed uh, either just general mental health care or needed longer term services, um, you know, or may have even felt intimidated to go into their college counseling um, center, uh, you know, right off the bat. So some of the barriers that we started noticing, um, well, one of them involved just, you know, having a limited number of sessions, uh, you know, I think all over the countries, uh, all over the country, um, universities feel pretty overwhelmed by the demand for uh, mental health treatment. Uh, they're working really hard to um, employ more and more psychologists and therapists to try to um, catch up with that demand, but um, it's really difficult. So oftentimes universities are limiting the number of sessions that students have. We've seen as few as three. Um, I think if you're at a really a, a place that has a really good session limit, it's probably 10. But even then, you know, if you have um, a history of complex trauma, 10 sessions might not be enough. And so uh, something that we certainly saw um, throughout our experiences and, and uh, yeah, and, and really prevented students from, from getting that treatment. Um, we also saw that treatment happened less frequently at a lot of the uh, college counseling centers we were at. So, you know, sometimes maybe they would be able to, to see people twice um, or once every two weeks, um, maybe even like once a month. And, uh, you know, again, sometimes some students are going to need weekly care. Sometimes they might even need to come in two or three times a week. Um, and so, uh, saw, so we saw a need there as well. Uh, also um, saw pretty long wait lists uh, at a lot of the schools that we, that we worked at. Um, so, you know, students that you know, usually might have some pretty acute problems that need to be addressed right away or oftentimes waiting for, you know, a month more um, to try to get those needs met. And so uh, throughout, um, you know, kind of all of these different barriers, I think uh, the, the transition became, okay, we're, we're feeling overwhelmed at, at the college counseling centers. Let's try to refer students to, um, you know, the local community, which is a great idea. Students have insurance or, or at least um, are required to have, you know, some form of insurance. And uh, a lot of them have the student health insurance. So it, it provides a pretty, um, you know, nice way to, uh, to shift uh, treatment to, uh, to another place that can maybe provide some of those services that colleges can't. However, started noticing some problems when referring students to providers that were off campus. Um, you know, first, uh, the distance away from campus can be a huge barrier for students. A lot of students don't have access to cars or vehicles or, you know, might be too expensive to do public transportation. Um, and so to, to have a, uh, you know, a provider or a group of providers within, you know, walking, biking, skateboard distance um, becomes really helpful. I think another, uh, another barrier that we saw with off-campus referrals was provider availability. Um, you know, some providers would be full and then students would call and then maybe they weren't going to get a call back because the, the therapist was overwhelmed with the amount of calls that they were getting and they were already full. So, uh, you know, it provided, um, you know, kind of a, a big communication barrier there, a big accessibility barrier. It was tough to know who was full, who was taking clients. Um, so that was one of the things that we really wanted to solve as well. Another big issue being uh, cost and insurance issues. Uh, you know, some students might not be able to afford the full cost of someone who's in a private practice downtown charging $150, $200 an hour for, uh, for treatment. So um, it, it, it would be a shame to leave those students left, uh, left out for, for healthcare um, simply because they, you know, were born or grew up in families that, you know, couldn't, uh, couldn't afford those services. Um, you know, a lot of the students do have the student health insurance, but 
uh, many also uh, do not. And so trying to find providers in the community that take their specific insurance could become pretty challenging as well. Uh, and then, you know, finally, I think we saw a pretty big lack of expertise with college student mental health. There were a few providers that were really good working with college students and, and could understand the population, um, but there were a great deal of other providers who just didn't specialize in that kind of care. And so, um, you know, it becomes challenging because, you know, college students are in a different stage of development and they have different needs and, um, and, and problems that come up um, than, than you know, as would, you know, maybe older adults or younger high school students or, you know, what, what have you. So, um, so yeah, we really just saw that, you know, students really struggled and desperately needed to get treatment. And we saw that especially with marginalized communities. And, um, you know, we just wanted to come up with a solution, a way to solve that, to open up um, some of those barriers and, and also maybe provide a different experience to therapy. Uh, you know, one that's really focused on quality care that's super accessible, affordable, um, specialized, and, and also kind of unique and innovative and hip. We wanted to be able to um, have a culture at Acacia where uh, students could really connect um, with their therapists, with the space, um, and just with the overall, you know, mission and values. Um, so speaking of our mission and values, I think it might be nice just to, um, just to read you know, kind of what our mission statement is. I know you can access this on the website, but sometimes it's better to hear it out loud. So our mission is to pr provide college students a safe, supportive space in which they receive quality, long-term, and consistent men mental health care that is highly accessible, affordable, specialized, and culturally sensitive. We also strive to provide holistic care, including things like yoga, mindfulness meditation, workshops, and different social programming or events geared towards en enhancing student well-being. Along with the mission, we do have a few core values that we try to, uh, to live by. Uh, one is to deliver the specialized, creative, and effective student-oriented mental health services. That's kind of obvious, goes along with our mission pretty well. Uh, we also want to embrace and celebrate diversity and multiculturalism, create fun, supportive, and intellectually stimulating environments, we always value being open-minded, compassionate, and empathic, and um, hire therapists who who share those same those same values. Definitely want to pursue continual growth and learning. Um, keep our pulse on the student community. Uh, make sure that we know um, you know the issues that come up for them, so we can help them when they come to our office. Certainly, building a trusting, warm, kind, and supportive. Uh, therapeutic relationships. Uh, when we hire therapists, it's something that we really look for, and that's what we uh, also survey uh, clients on, is to make sure that they can really connect and feel supportive in those relationships, because it is scary uh, when you're in college, and it might be your first um, experience going to a therapist, and um, I think at very least, you know, to have that, that trusted, warm bond um, becomes really essential. We also wanted to build a positive team-oriented family-like work atmosphere. Um, we wanted to have fun. I know that the, the work can be really challenging at times. I know that we do a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of Acacia's focus is on the clinical work. Um, uh, but, you know, in the times where there's a cancellation or, well, hopefully not a no-show, but they do come, uh, no-shows or, um, you know, just meeting for staff meetings or, or case consultations, or lunch hours, um, you know, just really wanting there to, uh, to, for Acacia to be a place where, you know, people can smile and have a good time um, at their job. We also really value being technologically efficient and environmentally friendly. I think this is extremely important working with students because, you know, as you all know, um, they are all very tech savvy. And so it's really important for us to be, uh, to mirror that, whether it's, you know, letting uh, clients make appointments via text message or doing, uh, uh, doing a podcast or, uh, you know, finding different ways to connect with students and, um, and, and you know, caring about the environment too in, in whatever small way we can. We try to be as paperless of a company as, as possible and um, uh, really try to minimize our, our footprint out there where we can. Uh, number nine, just having passionate and determined attitudes. Um, we love to find people at all levels, um, whether it's the director position or um, therapist or admin, front office staff, billing team. Um, we really want to find people that are passionate about working with college students um, and are really determined to help.
And then finally, the last value is just to listen, innovate, and promote change towards the needs of student students and universities. Um, you know, that's our that's our whole niche, and um, it's just really important that we again, you know, kind of stay connected to those communities. So those are some of our uh, values and yeah, our core mission. Um, I think we've been doing a really, really good job so far. Uh, when Keith and I first started, we, we did not know um, how well things would go. And, and once, once things started moving, um, we could tell that, you know, this is something that students are really needing. And, and so that's why we continued to open up offices. Um, after we had the Isla Vista office, we moved into uh, Davis, California, opened an office there, and then shortly thereafter opened our Minneapolis office. Um, we also, uh, just a couple weeks ago, started our Acacia Westwood office out of LA, supporting mostly students from UCLA. And then in January, we'll be going to um, Acacia La Jolla, which will be um, you know, uh, supporting the students over at UC San Diego. Uh, so really, really exciting stuff. We love um, to continue serving, uh, serving the students. And so long that there's a need, uh, you know, you can count on us to, uh, to be there to, uh, you know, try to uh, provide what's needed. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. Um, if you have any other questions about that, certainly send them along. Um, again, uh, within this email, I'll attach uh, a, um, a Google form that you can fill out so that you can learn more about the company, learn more about me or, or CODA or anyone else that's in the organization. Um, be happy to answer questions. We try to be really transparent uh, throughout our company. So, um, you know, when we can, we would love to share, um, you know, anything that's going on. So keep the questions coming and I will uh, try to get used to this video blog. This is my first time doing something like this. So uh, hopefully it'll get better as we go along. All right, thanks everybody.